What's going on guys and welcome to a premier watch show on YouTube. It's called It's Complicated and my name is Christopher. Today I'm going to show you guys an interview I got to do with a celebrity. So I was on the phone with a friend of mine and he told me that he would let me meet a celebrity and he says that this celebrity has a fantastic wristwatch and he said I could interview him about that watch. The celebrity's name is Gianni Russo. Now I would predict that everybody watching this show knows Gianni Russo from a very famous movie called The Godfather. How fantastic is he in that scene? Now, before I play this interview for you guys, let me just say that this was a pretty unscripted interview and there are some things I wanna throw out there before I show you the interview. Number one, the watch we're gonna be talking about is over 60 years old. Johnny told me that he's worn it in all the movies he's made, including The Godfather. This is the only watch Gianni owns, and he's been offered by many sellers, many different companies, many different people for a new watch, and he will not do that. He loves the watch he's wearing. Now, when I show the watch off, one thing I missed is there is an engraving on the back. I didn't know about the engraving, so I didn't get a nice close-up view of the engraving, but you're probably going to see it from the side a little bit. Stay tuned here because Gianni Russo has quite the tale to tell about how he got this watch. Rolex. Guess who I get to hang out with right now? Gianni Russo. How cool is that? But he has an amazing watch story. If you don't mind, could I see that and bring it up to the camera real no, quick? No, please. be my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Don't run away with it, though. No, no, I won't. I won't. Check that out. How amazing is that watch? And look at the side with the diamonds. I mean, this is a stellar timepiece I get to hold here. And uh, Johnny has quite the story on what this watch means to him and how he got this watch, etc. If you don't mind, go ahead and tell the story. Well, I, I fortunately, and I say fortunately, I had polio. 1949 and I was bedridden for five years in a state hospital and when I got out I was selling ballpoint pens on the street uh, with my gimp whole left side and one day in the in the window of Van Cleef and Arpel they put this watch and it said Cellini Rolex so I thought it was an Italian watch it was Cellini is the designer of it and they made the watch for a guy that is world renowned to a lot of people, Johnny Agnelli, who owned Fiat Motor Company. They had it on display before they sent it to him. So I asked the lady, I said, give me the serial number of the watch. Her name was Mary. She used to give me hot chocolate and different things in the, in the winter. And she said, what do you want that by? I said, someday I'm gonna own that watch. And so yeah, sure, sure. So she gave me the serial number. That was 1957. Wow. And my birthday is December 12th. Okay. So with that said. It's coming up. Yeah, it's coming Sunday. Up soon. Yeah. Sunday. So with that said, years went by and I was in front of the Sherry Netherlands Hotel. So I went inside and I asked her if they would write me a, a letter to Rolex. Because I couldn't write, I was an illiterate still am. I never went to school. I went to sixth grade and then got out of there when I was 12. And I went on the street, started peddling ballpoint pens, and then moved on. How amazing is that already? I'm already like, highly... Uh, keep going, keep going. No, but the, the thing is so, so crazy. So even unbeknownst to me, they wrote the letter on Sherry Netherlands stationery from the hotel. So I, I hand-delivered it to Rolex with the serial number saying I'd like to purchase it. Months come by, they call the Sherry Netherlands, and so we got a letter here from Mr. Russo. So I went down and got the letter and brought it back to them, and they read it to me. And the guy said, anytime you're in Dolda, Switzerland, look me up, and we'll talk about the watch. And I couldn't figure out why would this guy think I'm there. 
Well, the stationery of the hotel that I was standing in front of, Sherry Netherlands, they thought I lived there. <laughs> really? Well, why else on the stationery? The guy thinks I go to the, I go to a ski resort. Right, so, right. So I go to a travel agent. I said, I want to go to Ladolda, Switzerland. They said, when? I said, anytime you can book it. This is years later because now I have money. So I fly there. I transferred. I went to Rolex. I said, what do you think the watch would cost? Because it's, you know, it's about nine carats of diamonds. They said, between nine and ten thousand dollars. This was now 1960-61. So I transferred it to Rolex in, in Dolda, Switzerland. Oh, man. So I go to the hotel and they come and page me, Johnny Russo, and I'm sitting there. And I come over. And the guy said, I want to hear the story about the watch. So I think it was the guy. So I tell him the story, he started crying. He said, how long are you going to be here? I said, until I get the watch. He said, we'll send the car tomorrow. So tomorrow, 11 o'clock, sure enough, they come pick me up. They take me out of town in this amazing, I mean, this house. I thought it was a resort. It was the guy's house. We pull up. The whole staff is lined up outside on the, on the porta cachere And this guy, I'm saying, what's he doing out here in the freezing cold? He wasn't the guy. It was the master that he was speaking for. So I go in, he, he apologizes, and he said, I, I know I, I probably confuse you, but Mr. Agnelli owns the watch, and he wants to meet you. So now here comes this guy, a little, little guy, five foot four, dressed to the nines. The size of the cameraman right now. Just there you go. Throwing you out there, yeah. Joel. So with that said, is I want to hear the story about the watch. So you want to hear the story again? So I tell him the story. So he tells the guy, go get this something, a box, an Italian. And he comes down with a dollhouse. And each window was a drawer that had a watch on it, on an automatic winder. Oh, so it would, it would just kind of... Yeah. So I never, I never knew, I never saw anything like that in my life. So I took off the watch. He took off the watch and he said, put it on. I put it on and it fit. He said, Fitz, this is great. I said, how much is the watch? He said, I don't sell anything. So now I'm really pissed. I flew over there. And I said, he said, why are you so bitter? I said, I'm not bitter. But I came over here, I told the story two times, and now you're telling me you don't sell the watch. He said, what are you not hearing? I said, I heard you're not going to sell me the watch. I'm not. So I'm going to give it to you. No way. Gave it to me. That's amazing. And I stayed his friend all those years till he died. I mean, I, how long ago did he pass? And, and Yelly probably di died in the late 90s. Okay. But how he, much is that worth now? Well, I don't know what it's really worth, but Rolex, because I, I bring it in and get it fit. Well, you can see it looks brand new. It does. It looks beautiful. From 57. They offered me 75000 for it. But so I mean, you so. know that means they could turn around and sell that thing oh, double. for at least, oh, at yeah. least double. Yeah. All well, they got to do is they got to, you know, take one of these photos here. He's got a lot of photos here that he would sign for people at this convention. I mean, all they got to do is take one of these photos, frame it, and then make a special frame, put that watch in the frame, and say, this was his. That's his. And you know they could get at least, no. I would say, at least 200000 I don't know. I mean, but I heard about Paul Newman's strap watch. They got... A million two or seven million? I didn't even figure. But I didn't even know what they got. Eighteen million. Eighteen million. A strap watch. But Agnelli, I mean, Agnelli bought Ferrari after that. I mean, the guy was a great guy and a good, good, good man too. Really a nice guy. The watch collecting thing is so cool. It's so, it's such an interesting collection. You know, his agent right now, he's wearing one of those beautiful Seiko watches. That's the recreation of the watch from Apocalypse Now. The one that I own. I, own, I mean, Grant, I don't own the actual one from the movie. Marlon Brando was in it. Yeah, Brando was in it. Uh, Martin Sheen was in Martin it. Martin Sheen, Sheen, Martin Sheen almost died. Yes, that. yes. He got malaria. That's yeah. And, and, and that watch, his watch, his watch is worth double what mine is. And mine's like an original 1965 or something. He's got a recreation. We'll show you after we're done filming I, yeah. this. You it's, showed it to me. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. As you can tell, I'm good at rambling. But that watch is absolutely stunning. I love. I mean, it's and it's not one of those. 
I mean, you hold that thing, the weight on that watch oh, compared yeah. to this. I mean, and this is this is a much bigger watch in general, but the weight on that's more than this because that's solid gold compared to the stainless yeah, steel. Yeah, it's 24 carat. I mean, that's amazing. That's amazing you could find something like that, have a story like that and, and just be given. And this is the only watch. I mean, people offer me watches all the time. I won't take them. I say, I'm not going to wear it. I'm not, don't waste your time because this is the only watch I'll wear. Yeah, it correct. means something to me. And I can't believe now, here we are. I saw it in 57. I bought it for my birthday, my 18th birthday. This Sunday, I'll be 78. Wow. So I have to watch 60 years already. <laughs> well, hey, again, my name's Chris. I appreciate you guys watching it. It was amazing to meet you, talk no, to you. My pleasure, thank you. Talk to you about the watch. I, I loved every it. minute of it. Thank you. And there you go, guys. Check out this picture that him and I got to take together, flexing the Rolexes. So cool. What a genuinely great guy to talk to. He was just so chill. I have talked with other celebrities in my life, and a lot of them are just very cut and dry. They don't really want to talk to you. They come across as kind of jerks. But this guy was so genuinely cool. I got to hear about all kinds of different things that he's working on, different things that he's done. Again, he just came across as such a great guy, wearing a fantastic solid gold Rolex with diamonds everywhere. And he says the dial is all original. That's pretty amazing. And that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of It's Complicated. Don't forget to subscribe to the show. Check out some of the other videos I did. I think you guys are definitely gonna like them. And we're gonna see you next time on another episode of It's Complicated.